today we are here with Hi, I'm Mr. Dubow. I'm in charge of the uh, SpaceX IBM uh, Epic Game Project and I am the teacher here that teaches ComTech and, uh, uh, and design basically. And today we're going to ask you a few questions. The first one is, what do you expect from the SpaceX project and what do you want to see it become? Okay, so the project is to try to do something that's never been done before. So we're working with uh, Unreal Engine, which we'll talk a little bit about after, which is a tool that allows us to do uh, game design, so design uh, components, and also film uh, a video or you know do cinematography in a in a software package. It's something that is uh, you know done regularly in, in Hollywood, for example, but, but we're gonna be trying to do that with our students. And we're also gonna be embedding game design thinking and uh, programming into what we're doing. What in particular were you most excited about in doing the SpaceX project? Um, I thought it was really cool because it was uh, one of the things you could do that actually impacted the world outside of like just the school. You know, it, it, you you actually felt like you were doing something productive in the world. I think for me, like I've really got to see OTHS's home tech program like really grow over the last couple of years. And I think for me, like seeing OTHS have the opportunity to contribute something to space um, was such a like weird, like such a cool, just like, I couldn't even believe it when Mr. Dubo told me. I was like, no way. And he's like, yeah. And I, I just, I couldn't even wrap my head around it because we're such a small school, but I think it's like, I think what I've loved most about it is that like, it's like a really big opportunity. And I think it's like gonna show our students like, the cool stuff that you can really do with Unreal Engine and the kind of difference you can make. What did you like better, the video or the poster? I enjoyed doing the video better just because using Premiere Pro is something that it's a technology that they use in like Hollywood and that sort of thing, so that's more my style. Plus I like that, being able to add like an audio um, aspect to the project. Uh, I probably preferred the the poster project. I just found it a bit easier. It was nice putting together the different things to make a poster. Tell us about the coding project. How did it go? Ooh, okay. Um, my personal camera project didn't go the best because uh, there was a bit of an error that I went through in the beginning where the, um, the starting point of my ball pond wasn't working properly so it wouldn't spawn in when you press the play button. Sort of got a bit too far and I didn't check if it was working properly as I went on enough. So once I got to near the end, I realized it wasn't working properly. I had to sort of go back and start from scratch and put the bits and pieces together. But in the end, I did end up getting a pretty nice game though. My project was a Mars Marine and it's basically like you would go around and you shoot aliens. The hardest thing about it was probably the, the movement in the actual player and yeah, it was really fun to do but really hard. How do you enjoy doing environment art project? Uh, it's my favorite one so far. It's actually pretty interesting. Um, it's not too hard, not too easy. It's kind of being creative, so I like it. I love the environment art and the kind of the creative side of Unreal Engine. For me, I, I definitely love the coding and programming side of things, but I think having the opportunity to really see and like visualize your work is something that I really value and appreciate when I'm working because I can spend all this hours and stuff and put it into a coding project, but like when it's something visual, people can really appreciate what you've done and really kind of see it in the same way like 
like if you're a coder, you're you're more appreciative of a coding game, but not everyone is. But I think everyone can appreciate visual um, art, and I think for me, it's being able to create something beautiful that's practical, and it's just really it's really cool to balance uh, some of the uh, programming side of things, but also the. Enjoy about working with Unreal Engine. Uh, I love how like simple it is and how good the movement is in the thing and how realistic all the movements of the AIs were. And I like how like you could do anything with it basically. Like you could add gun movements for all free and you don't have to pay any money. It's a very versatile and powerful tool. It can do a lot of things that I never thought would be possible to do for with students. You know, the kind of high level programming things that we've been doing, you would need to be an expert in C++, but now we're able to do this in high school. So things like we built a VR game, uh, we built several 3D games. We're building a simulation of the earth uh, that, uh, you know, we could explore different parts of the actual planet earth. We did that last year. And now we're doing that with our digital twin of the earth for, uh, for the SpaceX and IBM project. And of course, the, the goal of the project, which I may not have mentioned, is to launch an actual real satellite into space that we're gonna be able to program using, in part, Unreal Engine. So that's one of the things that we're, be, for example, doing with that tool. That, uh, again, we don't know how to do it, we just know it can do it, and we'll work on figuring it out. So it's a process, uh, the project is a, a year-long project, uh, that's going to span two, you know, two school years, and we are in the process of finishing off the first uh, year, uh, and things are going very well. Tell students that haven't used it yet that want to learn how to use it. I think I would tell them that perseverance is a virtue and um, that I think it is such a valuable skill that like I never would have thought is something that I would like if you had told me like grade nine me like this is something you're gonna enjoy I wouldn't have believed you and I think I think just give it a shot you know what I mean like I think just really give it an opportunity and see how far it can take you because there's so many creative liberties with Unreal Engine you can really kind of go anywhere with it. You have the opportunity to um, build a planet if you want to, or build an environment, or build a video game, or uh, make a commercial. And I think that students don't really realize the potential until it's really put into their hands. And I think that's kind of what this class offers and what this program offers is that you really get a chance to like put it into your own hands. And I think that just give it a shot and, and really work hard at it because otherwise it's not going to do anything for you. Take time. Take your time and don't rush it because it's, it's really hard. So. What are some challenges that you've overcome? So the thing with this project is a lot of the things that we're trying to do, I've never done before and neither of my students. And so there's a lot of problem solving. Really, it's about problem solving things that are hard, possibly, and trying to collaborate with each other. And what's really worked well is sometimes I can't figure it out, but I pass it on to the students and they look at it from a different angle and they're able to do the thing that we are trying to do. For example, one of the things that we're doing is we're creating a digital twin. So we made a twin of the earth using a plugin called Cesium. So it's, you know, it's got all the addresses, all the buildings, all the streets, everything from uh, our planet. And so we have built a launch pad for the rocket. So the, the Falcon 9 rocket, which will be sending our satellite to space in June, uh, we basically rebuilt that whole launch pad on our digital planet. And one of the problems we were having is when we would uh, create, you know, when the rocket takes off and there's like, uh, you know, all the fire and the smoke, well, it wasn't working well with the, uh, the, the program Cesium. So we had to figure it out and it took us three days to find a solution. 
And the problem is, is there's not really anybody I can ask. So, you know, how do we do it? We're doing this for the first time. And, you know, it's exciting because high school students can attack authentic problems. So they don't always have to be just doing something that's been done a hundred times uh, in, a, in a textbook. They can do something that is a real problem that, uh, you know, could benefit uh, students. And of course, those companies were trying to work Gavin and he's going to show us a little bit about his environment art project and what he's done so far. Okay, so I'm finished at the moment. So like so far, I put in a bunch of trees around my wall. I put a bunch of ruins sticking on the mountains just to make the mountains less boring. Uh, I added water and a little orb that are floating in the water. Uh, these barrels here are breakable matches, so when you run into them, they will no, be destroyed. But if you want to challenge the sky right here is the NPC that chases you, and they're kind of like a tree man that's in the forest. Um, and I'll show the gameplay. So, so when you go in the game, uh, you spawn with this guy, who so I uploaded to the game, and you can see you break the the breakable meshes, the tree men will chase you and hit you most likely. And if you don't get touched, they'll say, get back here or something like that. After five seconds of chasing you. And yeah, that's, that's about the game. I also had far down. Very cool. Hi, I'm here with uh, Liam. Liam's going to talk to us about what he's doing in his environment art in Unreal Engine. Could you show us a little bit what you're doing, sir? Or what you've done and what you've built? So I've made sort of a forest and I have most of the gameplay elements that I'm already. Kind of grid or dock. Nice water. Beautiful trees. Yeah, I'm currently trying to get uh, this object to blend with the landscape better okay very cool can you show us you said you built the ai in yours already uh yeah uh, you don't mind showing us how that works i made a spawner and then, oh it's an auto spawner yep yeah. and we have uh, this part of the blueprint which basically just has it moved to the person if if you go too far or if it doesn't catch up to you it prints this message and yep. then it uh, bleeds itself. It does get you and then displays a message and then bleeds itself. Okay. I apparently changed it to oh, and you the model. You did, good. Uh, yeah. And then there's a spawner which I just sort of spawns the actor. Can you show us an action with your player playing? Uh, yeah. Just maybe you can play right from uh, in the spawner cube. Oh, you changed, uh, and you also changed your mannequin to uh, one of the Paragon assets. Very cool. It's like a gunslinger guy or something. We haven't figured out how to do that part where he uh, interacts and attacks the bad guys. They're all there waiting for you. You could make your cube a lot bigger, right? So they spawn all over the map. And then they disappear. Very cool. I'll stop. Oops. I'll stop here. Does it stop? I don't know why they don't want to stop recording. It likes your video, so. I'm here with Emma, and she's going to explain a little bit about her Planet Earth project. So I am making um, a replica of the Earth right now. Um, I've got some clouds. I've got a moon. I'm just working on adding in the stars. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of plugging away towards getting an earth done. I've got some clouds over here, um, and hopefully we can use this to kind of show off the rocket and how it's going to apply to our CubeSat going into space. That's so cool. Yeah. I'm with Michael and he's going to show us a little bit about his environment art project and what he's done so far. 
Uh, so I slept in like a tropical island, kind of like a resort kind of thing. So like a beach with All now. resort yeah, cuts. I don't know, dock, beach. Not, not a really big one, but you know, I didn't have as much time to do it. So, uh, yeah. So if I hop into play, you go in the houses. Pretty empty though. And then if you go over here, there's a dock, a little beach. A little bit of vegetation in the water. I uh, put a few trees everywhere. Um, pretty much it. I'm always.